if the democratic forces win in the 2015 general elections and form a democratic government, I think it is a big step towards a democracy and it, it will have a lot of effects on the everyday life. It would be the first time, I think, in a very long while, where you see uh, public opinion uh, play a weight on who is in power and who isn't. Uh, we have been hoping a lot from it because we, we hope this will be a really genuine election which will bring the real democratic changes to our country. This wasn't the case in, in 2010. I think that's, that's quite commonly accepted. Uh, for more than five decades, the country has been living under the, the different types of the dictatorship, like one party, military. So at that situation, we don't have any spaces for the public to engage the political uh, sphere, space. Because it is a necessary part of the de uh, democratic transition. We can expect that more than 80, around 90 political parties will be contesting in this election. There are a lot of ethnic political parties and, uh, you know, how to say, political candidates as well. But uh, we have, you know, two main parties like uh, USDB and uh, NLD. And both parties are not uh, recognizing or, uh, how to say, uh, taking considerations mm. of the ethnic issues and women's issues at all. If the democratic opposition group wins, like uh, NLD and other ethnic democratic ethnic minority party wins, I think that I think uh, the, the situation of the ethnic minority groups will be a lot improved. The problem is, uh, you know, in the, the, the both parties, they they don't uh, they they don't show, you know, very clearly what is their future plan for the country. To me, uh, the commitment is the most important. There is also some uh, ethnic parties as well. So, yeah, I think the ethnic people like Shan and Kachin will be, they will be vote for their you know, own uh, ethnic parties. Election is the, one of the key elements for the democratic transition. For the past five years, I think Myanmar hasn't quite seen the kind of party politics you see uh, elsewhere, uh, even in the region, for example. Um, there are parties, there are some level of divisions along those lines, but for the most part, we've seen uh, parliamentary activity very much be issue-based, and I think my hope is moving into the next election, seeing the next crop of uh, uh, parliamentary candidates come to the table um, would be a continuance of that, a focus on, on key issues and uh, the kind of lively discussions we've had around those key issues continue. We want to see the free and fair elections. There were some setbacks for, for, for our hope because of the recent situation which are happening. Because the current 2008 constitution is not fair. According to Bami's constitution, there are 25 percent unelected military officers in the parliament. The former generals, you know, you know they, they, they are in the power. Like the results of the election can, uh, can be affected by their presence in the parliament. If you are not able to change the systems, only changing the people is, you know, it's nothing actually. At the same time, NRD or other opposition parties need more than 67% to form a government. It is already unfair. If the constitution is not amended, and then, uh, uh, for example, in Article uh, 59F in this constitution, is really, uh, uh, you know, uh, barring uh, Aung San Suu Kyi's to be elected as a president. So we are not expecting or seeing the elections will change the whole system. The result of the election must have democratic consequences. We have to go back to the people, bring the people into the process, let them engage the process at every corner of the people, not only the urban area like Yango, Mandalay, Molomiai. What I'm talking about is the very remote villages, asking them to engage these process. Okay? So that might change the political uh, landscape. Yeah, so I think that is really important and need to improve and empower people. All those elections uh, are a big change for us because uh, we are not all that you know, familiar with those, these democratic uh, 
weight or lifestyle and all that, you know. So all these changes have affected our, our lives socially too, you know. So for us, what we are doing right now is we just uh, share the information to the government, uh, to the community, as they might need to know about the election and what the process is, how to the register and how they can go for vote and what they can do the best for their wives to be put on the election. But, um, you know, in our, uh, even in our neighbors, I don't know who, who, who will be our, our represent, represent person in our township until now. The good thing is that the community are not really aware of the, they, we don't have enough information, enough knowledge on how can we work for the democracy and the human rights. Now we just on the process of learning. We believe that we can mobilize the people to engage the politics, peaceful mean, and then legally. But we have to speak to them what we think, what we want them to do. And they have to work closely with the community. And again, the people might be thinking about, okay, for our constituency, we need electricity. We need uh, qualifying teachers. We need good roads. We need security. So, uh, if the if an MP connect and translate this interest, and then put in the parliament to become a public policy or to become a law overarching to other constituency. So that may make a the a good MP. So election may, might be another one window for the people to engage the process.